Hi, everybody. I'm Ed. And I'm Barb. And, and we're, we're the, the streeters. streeters. Welcome to the RDRV Q&A tonight, where we attempt to answer all your questions about stained glass. And glass. And anything you, anything you want to ask us, we'll talk about. Uh, hopefully it pertains to glass, because that's what we do. So welcome, everyone. It's good to see everyone. We're uh, happy to be here. And tonight we're going to start off with some questions and we're going to have a live chat with Ed. We're going to chat with Ed about some glass and some things. We and sure are, Barb. We're going to have a demo. So I got today's date right. Today is Monday, May the 16th. Congratulations. I, I got it right this week, y'all. <laughs> so thanks for tuning in, everybody. Just wanted to say hi and that uh, what a beautiful day here it is in South Carolina. Um. Ray is here. Hi, Ray. Julie is here. Mark is here. CM is here. Joyce is here. Hi, everyone. It's good to see everyone. So um, if you have any questions, just put them in the chat. Our Facebook friends will be joining us in about 10 minutes. And um, Yeah, we still have that lag. I don't know why there's a lag, <laughs> but there is. Uh, Joan is here from Youngston, Ohio. And um, so welcome, everyone. If you want to start with some questions right away, that's fine. Or we, we can wait a few minutes. We it's can. We can, we can, uh, can kind of hang out and, and wait for uh, some more. To, uh, just wanted to show. This is the window that Ed's been working on this week. We wanted to show it to you. Yeah. Actually, our customer, uh, Jenny, she'll be coming by to pick that up later on this week and take it home. She uh, has been a very patient customer while I was getting my hip repaired. So, Cat St. Jane is here. Christine Donaldson is here. Hi, everyone. So let's start off with a few questions, Ed. Okay, Barb, let's do it. Uh, we had a viewer wanted to know where we order our glass from. Well, you know, there's, there's several areas around the country that you can order. We order uh, a lot of our glass uh, from Sunshine Glass up in Buffalo. We also order glass from uh, Franklin Art Glass in Ohio, and we can you can order direct from uh, Kokomo, and you can order uh, sheet glass from Wismack too. Um, just you know, small pieces. I suggest if you're going to order large sums, that you uh, you go ahead and and get those numbers together. And don't forget when you're ordering glass from somebody. Please try to have the part number and the manufacturer for them because it sure does make things a lot easier. They wouldn't, you know, if they didn't, if they didn't, they wouldn't want you to use the numbers if they didn't put numbers on the glass. So if there's a glass that you have in your repertoire that is absolutely just beautiful and you love it so much, make sure that you write down that number, the part number for that glass. Now, of course. Every sheet is different, even though they may use the same two, three, four, or five colors. Every sheet is different. And that sheet is different because of how the two or three people actually mix those colors and how it rolls out on the sheet. And if you've never seen the process, it is just completely amazing how sheet glass is made. So we just order our glasses from different areas around the country. And we also have one here in, in uh, South Carolina, Palmetto Mirror and Art Glass Corporation. They also uh, have stained glass supplies, lead, solder, things like that. And we have done all, we're still doing all we can to update our website, right, Barb? To update our website so that we have your tools available to you on our website. Sheet glass, we're, we're unable to pack and ship and, and do all that for you. However... Just a spoiler alert, we are reopening our stained glass retail uh, in the fall here at the shop at Conway Glass. We're working on, we got a lot of projects going on, but we are definitely opening our glass retail back up this fall. Stained glass retail. Stained glass retail. Probably the gallery will be open on certain days. They won't be open every day. We'll have certain days we're open. Yeah. Well, you know, so it, it might just be Saturdays or it might just be Fridays. We're not sure what we're going to do, but there'll be certain days that will be. Yeah. Open. I mean, we may have whimsical Wednesday where you come in and buy your glass or I don't know. I can think of a lot Jenny of names. Okay. Thirsty Thursday. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Wine, Never mind. Wine Wednesday. I don't know. 
Okay, Magali's here. Ray, Ray said that's nice window. Uh, Julie Graves is here. Stand the glass is here. And Jenny is here. Hey, Jenny. Good to see you. You see your window. Well, you saw pictures. You saw you put, saw pictures of it this weekend. We illuminated it for you tonight, though. So it sure it sure is pretty. So we're yeah. enjoying that. So just a shout out for Ray. Thank you, Ray. We really appreciate that. Yes. So um, one of the other questions we had, um, someone asked. We were talking about uh, restrip. Yeah, last Monday night and we were talking after about. After we had the show, someone posted, "Can you put the restrip around a sun catcher?" Absolutely not. Well, I I don't recommend it. What you should do around the outside perimeter of your sun catchers, just like your lamps, you should use a 16 or 20 gauge pretend wire around the perimeter of your sun catchers and incorporate your hanger into that wrap with the wire. And that way it'll, it'll do two things. The, the hanger will be pulling on the entire sun catcher and it's not going to separate. Plus your sun catcher will have very little chance at all, if any, of coming apart in the future. That's right. Yeah, so don't use the, the restrip is used for the interior of your window, copper foil, and you can put it in lead. Now, the other thing is, is they do make a lead profile barb that actually has the restrip in the center or in the heart of the lead, and it's extruded as the lead is, as the came is being made. And that is awesome. Doesn't take any more to cut it. Takes a little more to bend it. But other than that, it's there. So this will eliminate possibly as many rebars as opposed to maybe just two or three vertical bars within your window by using this uh, lead profile that has the restrip inside the heart. Okay. I hope that I, answers your question. <laughs> did I say Magali was here? You did. did. I tell you Magali was here? And uh, Julie Graves, Brenda Craig, uh, Mimi is here. Hey, Mimi, we haven't seen you in a couple weeks. Scott is here and Christy's here. Hey, Christy. Hello to everyone. Thanks hey, Christy. How in. you doing? Thanks for coming in and chatting with us. Yeah. And thanks for coming in tonight and just, you know, throwing a few questions at us. We did get some questions this week over the, on the website and we have those jotted down and we're, we're working on while everybody's thinking of something yeah, to ask us. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and continue answering the questions that were written down this, this week that we printed out yesterday. <laughs> I wrote them down today. I know, but we printed them out. Well, yeah, we had them yesterday. Uh, they, they came they in come yesterday. From like three different sources that so we have to put them all together. I think I have all of them. If I missed any of anyone's questions that you wrote in, just jot them right down here in the chat because I try to keep up with them. All of them. Um, another question came in on one of the sites. Uh, do we provide intro classes to stained glass? Not in not in person stained glass classes as of yet. You know, we're we're in South Carolina, and our our numbers are still actually have jumped back up on the rise right again. Now they're kind of yeah, they're kind of coming back so up. So yeah, we're not sure what's going to happen. Uh, the main reason, though, that we are remodeling this, uh, I guess, what is it's about a thousand square feet in the back mm -hmm. and turning that into our retail because we want our customers to have a space to come in where they're not really up against one another, breathing on each other and everything. We want to put them in a space in the back where they can look at the glass and actually have time to prick it out and choose what they want without feeling... Oh, what would be the word? Claustrophobic. Yeah, without feeling claustrophobic or bumping into someone. That nice little thousand square foot area is going to be really nice for everyone. And it's going to keep you be able to keep you separated so that you feel comfortable and can shop. So we're excited mm -hmm. about yeah, that. Yeah, we're excited about that. But at, at this time, Something no, new. we don't provide in-person classes, but we encourage you to watch our YouTube channel and watch the videos that we have taken the time to get you started in this beautiful, beautiful medium we call stained glass. Brenda's here. Brenda Mickley's here from um, North Carolina. Welcome. Hey, Brenda. Good to see you, hon. Thanks uh, for tuning in. 
Okay, this viewer said she's starting back in stained glass. And she found a piece of zinc channel in the back of her closet. It's bent and twisted. <laughs> Is there a way to straighten it out? Like that? I'm um, kind of thinking it. I'm thinking it's like there. that, but I, I will say this. The answer to. Is that zinc? Yeah, this is zinc. I just okay. twisted it and bent it. Okay. And there is lead. absolutely no way to straighten it out. <laughs> so uh, this is the piece it's that I. not like lead. No, it's not like lead. Lead, you know, lead, they'll ship you all your different profiles and they'll roll them up into a little, nice little, uh, what I call a lead cake. And, and you can unroll that and put it in your lead stretcher and stretch it. However, zinc doesn't do the same thing. I would with that piece of zinc that's all twisted and mangled and probably way too oxidized to solder, just give it your blessing and send it out to the recycle bin. And uh, that'll make you happy because you cannot straighten zinc out because it doesn't stretch. But that's a good question because, you know, we've had so many questions about zinc, you know, and what to do with it, what not to do with it, and where you use it where you don't use it and why you use it and why you don't use it. So all of those questions about zinc are awesome. And, uh, you know, zinc is pretty, pretty interesting material, uh, but it's really, it's, it's too rigid for a lot of applications That's and it's not rigid enough for others. <laughs> so. Okay. Um, also I want to let everyone know we are now eligible for super chat, super Stickers. Thanks. Thanks. Super stickers. Super sneakers. No. Super thanks. Super sneakers. I want a pair of those. Anyway, if you are so inclined, we give us a super thanks. It helps support our, our channel and lets us get encouraged and keep right. on doing what we're doing. Well, and so it, thank you everyone because we did get a super chat, chat last, week. last week. And that was that was, that was great, awesome. y'all. Thank you very much. Yeah. It's greatly appreciated. And again, all of those little things are what help support our channel mm -hmm. along. You know, it really supports uh, the channel for Barbara and I is when y'all show up every Monday night just to say hi. Okay. Now, Brenda is here and she has a question about using a rheostat. Do you use one? Which one? And is, is it digital? Brenda, I'm old school. I don't use a digital rheostat. I use the the inland's mini, what's called a mini phaser. And, uh, and then there's another one. Choice. It's, it's really your choice. You know, this is well, a, is it a choice? Is that a choice? Cause I got, I have one on the, no, this is, uh, this is just your basic. And I don't I even know the name of it, choice, I think. but uh, I think it's, it's the what's on our website, but this is, this just allows you to, um, you yeah. know, Barbara did, put a soldering on. station um, on our website, didn't you? No, in the description. Here, put it here. In the description, I put... Oh, you got it right yeah, there. Yeah, I got it. In the description of the chat, I put the Weller mm -hmm. iron that we used, and I put a uh, rheostat like this one. It's a little 20-some dollar rheostat. Um, yeah. And that's all you... You know, that's all you need is to save... That a twenty dollar or twenty four dollar rheostat is all you need to save that hundred dollar soldering iron that you use. You can, you, it just doesn't make any sense not to run a rheostat with your soldering iron. Those of you that want to know, well, how do you retin your iron? You know, if you use a rheostat, you won't have to retin your tip because you can control the temperature. And we're going to talk a lot more about temperature in a little while. Right. But the rheostat, hey, I've been using one since day one. And I recommend that you use one because it'll save your soldering iron. It'll keep you from having to retin your tip. And the other thing is, is it's going to it's going to make your work look a lot better because your solder is going to flow better because you can just dial that thing right in and get that. You can get that plus or minus one or two, maybe five degrees either direction, and you'll be just fine. You'll love it. Um, Brenda, the answer to your question is yes, we do use a rheostat. We don't use a digital one. Um, 
And there are a lot of good digital rheostats. Weller makes two different ones. They're really good. Um, we just like the flexibility of being able to move our little rheostat with our iron rather than having to move the whole yeah. station. Well, this when we're wanting to move our iron. Yeah, closer. this comes with a five foot cord. Your Saturn iron comes with a five foot cord. Now you got 10 foot. You can do whatever you need to. And instead of having to move that re that whole soldering station to the other, you know what I mean? Around the room. Around so the that's room. why we're, yeah. this is a little bit more flexible. Nothing wrong with the digital one. There's fine too. absolutely nothing wrong with the digital. It's personal preference. I, you know, I don't, there's even, I think there's even an iron that has a rheostat up in the, in the handle. That one just doesn't make any sense to me because as you're using it, you could always hit that rheostat with your finger or something and turn it down. And then you're, now you're wondering why your, your solder looks really bad or it's peaking up on you and you can't figure out why it's not melting correctly. Okay. Scott one is here. Hi Scott. Hey Scott. Good to see you. A.K. Martinez has a question. Uh, I hope that answered your question, Brenda. Um, and A.K. Martinez, uh, I want to make a monogram piece around 12 by 12 for my friend who just got her first home. I would like to frame it in wood. Never done this before. Best to do like a channel frame or uh, I think. That's all I got on that. Yeah. Um, so what you want to do is use the wood that, that we have showed you in our, go to our video called, I think it's called framing it, right? Frame it. Frame it. Frame yes. it. Go to yeah. that video. It shows you the wood and it is, it's the groove is down the center of the wood, nice and clean on both sides. And even though it's a 12 by 12, when you frame that, you're going to be very impressed with it. Oh, the uh, question was uh, best to do a channel frame or put in an already made frame and silicone it in. No, I would use a channel frame, glue it and screw it together and never silicone your stained glass windows into anything. Please. If, okay. you, if for any reason you need to remove it you're going to break stuff getting it out. So please don't ever silicone your windows. You can put little tiny dots just to, to keep, keep them from rattling. rattling. Right. But um, we don't recommend siliconing or the silicone in against your stained glass. Um, so. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of uh, silicone in a window in and is really a lot of, of, of a mess and it's really, difficult if you have to do anything to it afterwards. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Scott says we look great. Oh, thanks, Scott. Thanks, Scott. If she looks great. Don't worry about it. I know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Ray is asking, in our new remodel, will we have lighted counters to put the glass on so our customers can see what the glass will look like when under light? Actually, Ray, we have beautiful four foot by five foot windows, natural light within this area. And uh, so we, we will have natural light for our customers to be able to hold, hold it up to the window or set it actually have even set the glass in the windowsill and see it and it in its natural light. Because um, in the, in the new stained glass room, the sun comes up through that window in the morning. And then about lunchtime, we are natural light. And it is just really, really going to, we hope that it's going to work out just fine. And you know, if, if, if the light that we have back there isn't enough, I'll put a light box back there for our customers. Well, um, I have a portable light box and I'll just put that back there on That's, the countertop. I, I forget about that. Boy. And so, yeah, we'll have a little light box. We'll back have there. little toys laying and around we'll all over the place. have glass cutters back there to trim stuff down. Yeah. If we have to. Squares, and, um, packing materials. And It'll... packing materials. And it should be, you know, we have a lot of students in this area that are asking about glass. And so we want to accommodate those students. Well, yeah, we want to try to because we want them to be able why, to come in. Why is that we, we Oops. want them to come in. Sorry about that. <laughs> so we want our we want our, our customers to come in and be able to, you know, go through the glass. Uh, and when we get everything set up, I imagine we'll probably have somewhere around 750 to 1,000 square feet of glass in the back. 
um, and not complete full sheets. Most of everything is going to be somewhere, you know, 16 by 21s and available for our customers to cut down and then take them home and use within their projects. So we're looking forward to it and we're looking forward to getting back together with our customers uh, here inside the building. Uh, but we're trying to do it in such a way that both they and Barbara and I feel comfortable. Okay. An update. I want to give an update. Go ahead. Okay. Last week we talked about the painting class that's going on in Corning this summer with Derek Hunt. And so Ed and I went home last Monday night and signed up for At the class. One o'clock in the morning At and you know, we're in. in. We finally got it all figured out. We're and in. We got in. Um, you have to be a member of the American Glass Guild. So uh, if you guys have the time to go or, or want to learn to paint on glass, the American Glass Guild is hosting a, paint, a lot of different workshops. Oh my gosh, a whole week all, full of A whole workshops. week full of presentations, uh, lectures. Uh, we're going up there to do some research in the library. And we're going to be taking Derek's class. Barb's so taking me so to excited. Corning's library, which I've never been. Yes, so it should and be I'm just so a excited. phenomenal time. Um, and we're looking forward. And to we're going to get so to. If you want to take that class, jump online. Yeah, and the we're going to start filling we're, up quick. We're going to spend eight hours with Derek Hunt learning how to a style of painting that we have been wanting to learn for a very long time. So. We are so looking forward to it. Last time Barb and I were in Corning was in 1991. Was it 1991? Okay. Later than that, you think? I don't know. You know, I can't think about it right now, but I'll figure it out. Time <laughs> runs together. Okay. Um, but just want to give you that update. Yeah, Thank thanks. You. Yeah, the Pelican's great, right? Thanks for telling us about what was upcoming in uh, yeah. Corning. Thank you all. Okay. Uh, Abby said she started practicing cutting glass with cheap framing glass. It is scratching easily because it's cheap or am I doing something wrong? How do you keep it from chipping at the end of the cuts? Well, if you're using picture framing glass, that... That glass is too thin. You need to go to the next thickness, which will be eighth inch glass. What you're using now, picture frame glass, is what they classify as 330 seconds. It's all in measurements. But um, if you use the eighth inch and, and when you're apparently you're cutting a straight line, pulling the glass cutter to you, or you're going when you get to the end, you're going off and you're chipping it. Any glass, not just not just 30, 30 seconds, soft window pane, picture frame glass will chip. Any glass will chip if you just rock off right off and just drop right off the edge. So keep in mind where you are in your scoring, where it needs to be. And I mean, you can come off and, and it sounds like if it's chipping that bad, you're just pushing, putting way too much pressure on your glass cutter. So keep in mind, try and lighten up on the pressure a little bit. And don't come off so hard, but definitely get a, the next thickness of glass other than that 330 seconds because it's it's going to give you a lot of confidence, but uh, it's also way too thin to really uh, improve your skills on cutting glass. Okay. Thank you, Ed. I hope that answers your question. I mean, sometimes I get discombobulated on how to answer it. <laughs> No, you don't. Because uh, I don't want to Willie McNilly it. Abby asked, is it safe to solder? Safe to solder what? I, she just said, is it safe to solder? I'm oh, the window apparently. glass? The window pane glass, Abby? Yeah. Is yeah, it, grind no, 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 it, foil it. Oh, no, it's the same. Practice with it, Abby. Yes. But it's just... The reason, oh, the reason that it, the reason that it's, <laughs> <laughs> the reason that it's chipping though, Abby, is because it's such a thin piece of glass. You can solder it, you can practice with it, you know. And I, and I'm sorry, you know, I tell you to go to your local glass company and get their scraps, or your picture frame, picture frame or framing companies only use three thirty second, and they actually have a glass that's thinner than that, so. 
keep in mind, try to practice on eighth inch glass. And, uh, but you can solder, you can grind and copper foil and solder any of the glasses, Abby. So, you know, don't, if you've already cut some of that window glass, the thin stuff, yeah, go ahead and grind it, foil it and solder it and practice, 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 practice. Because as I'll tell you, and so will many, many of your friends that tune in on Monday nights, practice will make perfect. And uh, we're all striving for that. That's right. So thank you, Julie, for that tip on the uh, class. We really yeah, do Julie, thank it. you very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Scott asked, "Have you all seen?" Oh, he was asking the others, "Have we seen the oak tree window?" Um, thank you, Scott. Thank you, Scott. Appreciate it. Um, so let's see if we have any more questions here. Or comments. Thank you all for the comments. And uh, let's see here what we have. Okay. So let me scroll up a little bit because I might have missed something. Um, we had the question come in: Why use a rheostat? Why do I have to use a rheostat? Well, and you know I, what? You may, you may have already covered this. I don't know. But you know what? You don't have to. Uh oh. <laughs> Sorry, that was my nephew in Maine that lives on, <laughs> on the Maine Canadian border. And just a shout out to you, Dennis. We're in the middle of a show. Just want to <laughs> say hi. Give the kids a hug for us. We'll talk to you later. So anyway, the the you kids. with with <laughs> with the rheostat, I, I'm not telling you that you have to use one. Um, because, you know, I use one indefinitely and I use it every time I work and I don't find myself buying new soldering irons and I don't have to ask Ed a question on how to tin my soldering tip. You know why? Because I use a rheostat and when you use a rheostat, the tin doesn't come off your, your tip because you're not burning it up. So think about it. And again, I'm not going to tell you you have to use a rheostat, but when you do use a rheostat, your work looks better, you look better, and your customer appreciates it a lot more, and you don't have any problems. Hey, Ed, how do I retin my soldering tip? Use a, use a rheostat, you won't have to retin your soldering tip. That's just Ed, and that's what I do, and I'm not, again, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to force you to use a, a rheostat. Personally, I'd spend the $24 and make your work look like a dynamite. Keep in me. mind that 100 watt Weller yep. with a number seven tip is going to go to maximum 700 degrees. That's you right. You only Barb. need between 300 and 400 degrees to solder copper foil or lead. Right. So there's no need to use all that temperature. You're just going to wear your tip out quicker. You're just going to burn it up. And I you mean, you can cool it down and wipe it off. And yeah, the more you, cool, the more you wipe, wipe it, it with a sponge, it's the cool down. Yeah, it's come but on. But if you keep the temperature at the temperature you need and not so hot, you don't have it. You'll work. You'll better. work. You'll work more efficiently. You'll use less That's solder. My personal experience. <laughs> well, a personal experience, Barb, is coming from you doing it for 36 years, huh? Well, you know, personal that, experience. That well, yeah, and, and other people. Yeah, and other people. I, there, I would say, I would venture to say that nine out of ten of you that are on our channel right now use a rheostat, or I hope you do. Um, Brenda asked a question. I'm sorry, Brenda. I scrolled right by. You. I didn't mean to. Um, Brenda says she has been using 6040 Canfield solder and switched to sapphire recently. Uh, her soldering iron is having to be retinned more often. Is it the sapphire solder or my old soldering iron having issues? Well, it's sapphire solder. I guess that's the name of a manufacturer, but I've never even heard of it. Right. So here's the deal. Canfield is the number one solder manufacturer in the country. If you, yeah, if it's, if it's, 
Brenda, you know, it was like a dollar or two a pound cheaper. I would, it sounds to me like this, uh, this other solder you're using has a lot of trash in it. Maybe. Does it? Possibly. Does it? Yeah. Does, does it you get little like black? It trash does it, it got little black spots in it when you're trying to solder? Canfield, the 6040 Canfield is going to be your best. Not everybody can make or solder. The, what's the other one? Ameri Ameri uh, Ameri Ameriway. 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 Now we use Ameriway and it's a little bit less expensive than Canfield, but I don't have any trash in my Ameriway. I've, We've weeded out all the bad solder companies over the last uh, a long period of time that we've been in business. Would I would you Google it and see if anyone else is having problems with that. Yeah, solder? because it, it just seems to me like uh, maybe it's like a, a, a Midwest manufacturer or something. Uh, I mean, it could be a good solder. It could be her. It could be your iron. Iron is maybe yeah. too hot for the solder. Well, it could be because you just switched up. You can't you can't use Canfield 6040 and then switch up to another solder and keep all of your settings the same on your I iron. Have a different content. Yeah, oh, it may okay. say it's 604010, but you know they they can plus or minus it some way or another, and it maybe it's just not working right. So if and if you're having to ten your tip, it sounds to me like uh, maybe you should. If, I know you've got more than one soldering iron in your studio. Try another iron and see if that if it makes that tip corrode. And if it is, it's your solder. Me, Mike P is here. Hey, Mike. Um, let's see. Abby. Um, Abby said she is getting something for free. That's why I'm using it. What is that? Is that the sapphire? Who who wrote that? What is she getting? What are you getting for free? <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, well, Abby was talking about a rheostat. Oh, you're getting the glass for free. Yeah. Okay. That's, well, that's fine. Good. That's use great. it. Use it. I, I'm not saying don't use it. What I'm saying, you were wondering why it's chipping when you roll off the edge. Yeah. Because it's so thin. If you if you just put too much pressure on it, it and the, you can actually break the glass. So. Make sure you're on a nice firm surface, cutting the glass. Y'all, it doesn't matter to Ed what you use to practice glass, what, what glass you use to practice on. The main thing is that you are practicing and you're developing cutting skills, which is as important as developing solder skills. One's in the beginning, one's at the end. Everything in the middle is really kind of, easy going, but glass cutting and soldering are your two most difficult processes of this process. That's right. Um, someone was asking Brenda, what temperature is your iron? And then Brenda had another question. Do you need a rheostat if your soldering iron has a temperature control? Temperature control is a rheostat. So if yeah. your soldering iron has is attached to a temperature control, it's the same thing as a rheostat. Right. So you don't need two of them. Yeah. And then because your iron has a, a temperature control on it, doesn't mean that you, you know, turn it all the way up. You want to, you want to find that medium. You want the solder to melt, but not the lead. You want it to be hot enough that it doesn't boil the flux. Okay. Cause there's, there are no, I don't even I don't even have the the rules on boiling flux because I don't I don't know how that works, but you don't want to do that either. So you, it's a very fine line between melting lead, melting solder, and breaking your glass doing copper foil during while you're soldering. You can have your have your soldering iron too tight, too hot, and you're going to break your glass while you're soldering. Especially those of you that are just starting out because you're going to want to have a tendency to spend too much time on with the solder. And remember gang, your soldering iron is not a paintbrush. Ray's telling everyone to give us a thumbs up. Thank you. Thank Ray. you, Ray. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mimi. <laughs> we appreciate that. Um, so Christine is here, Christine Donaldson. Um, she said her cheap solder left her with black spots all through it. And she switched back to Canfield. 
and that problem went away. Yes, tinning my tip is almost never now. So yeah, you right. you're dialed into the right product. Right. And so just a just a little quick reminder when you're when you're done using your solder and iron, take your rheostat, turn your solder and iron down to about half of where the where it was. Let it sit just for a minute. Take a damp sponge, not a wet sponge, but a damp sponge, okay? Damp. And just whoosh, whoosh, hit your solder and iron on the front and back side one time and turn it off and leave it like that. Because when you turn your solder and iron the next time, that tip is going to be clean. It's already tinned and you're ready to go to work with no problems. So just remember, wipe that tip off before it cools down all the way, but at about midstream on the temperature. It, it always, it always helps, doesn't it, Barbara? Yes, it does. And Christy says she loves her Canfield solder. Not so crazy about their plate paste flux. Oh, she wants to try the Ruby. Please try the Ruby flux. It's a game changer. I put a link to the Ruby flux on the, on the, um, description of this live stream because i knew we were going to be talking about solder and irons fluxes fluxes and that ruby flux and a weller iron with a rheostat is going to give you the best results we feel that they'll it will give you the best results. well you know weller's been knocking it down with solder and irons and soldering equipment for a very long time okay you know uh back in the day when the uh, uh Dad would, when I was young and dad be playing with radios around the house, he had a Weller soldering gun. The gun, not an iron, but the gun. And don't try to use that for stained glass because it doesn't work. No. But he, to do electronics, you use what they call a, re, a rosin core solder, which means it has a flux inside the solder and it's only designed for electronics. So please don't use that type of solder for your projects either. And if you can get away from a paste flux, please try the Ruby flux because it will definitely change the way you feel about soldering. Jerry wanted to know, does Ruby come in, Ruby flux come in paste? Abs no, no, no. We don't recommend paste I don't flux, recommend paste. that's up to you, whatever you like to work with. But we don't, we experiment it with it and we haven't had good. We just don't do the fume part of it. The yes, paste fume. flux fumes and, uh, you know, it's bad enough trying to keep the correct ventilation available to you in your studio without having to have more smoke and everything else involved in the whole thing. So yeah, we do the Ruby flux. We it's a liquid flux and I, I bet I use only a cap full of Ruby flux to solder that entire Pelican window there. So think about that. It lasts forever. It lasts forever. Okay. And that, and the paste flux, it, you know, it doesn't last that long. Yeah, you get it looks too like too much a, flux on your product, product, and then you got to clean it all off. This is yeah, it looks like a can easily. of chewing tobacco laying on your <laughs> table. Okay, do we have any more questions online? Okay, here we go. Uh, Vicky G, she says she's a bit loony. I don't think you're loony, Vicky. <laughs> she bought a solder and iron temp tester on Amazon for $20. So I know where my rheostat temp was for each number. Okay. That's well, awesome. You can do that. There's nothing wrong with that. Here's the thing, everybody, is solder, solder, 50-50 uh, solder melts somewhere around 392 to 414. 60-40 solder runs about 12 to 18 degrees hotter than that. Your soldering iron, let's say, let's say your weller comes with a, a number seven tip in it. That tip, maximum temperature is 700 degrees. You definitely don't need that much heat to melt the solder. And you don't need that much heat to solder in general. So the rheostat is going to save you from ruining your soldering iron. Soldering irons are expensive now. I remember when they used to be $10. Now there's 80 and 90 and a hundred dollars. But if you use your rheostat and Hey, like Vicki, she bought a controller to, that or a temperature gauge that told her where 
all of her different temperatures were. And I'm going to tell you right now, lead, y'all, lead melts at 627 degrees. Melts. Melts. That's pure lead, okay? Pure lead. The cane that we use in fabrication of leaded glass windows today is not pure lead, period. It's got copper in it. It's got antimony in it and another chem, uh, metal that I can't even think of right now. And I apologize for that. But our lead that we use today in stained glass windows is not pure lead. It has to have other things in it so that they can extrude it, so that we can stretch it, so that it lasts within the elements. You know, okay. So I just want to let you know, think about that. Your solder is what you're trying to melt. You're not trying to melt your lead and you're not trying to get your soldering iron so hot that you're going to be breaking your glass because you know what? When you're doing copper foil to remove a piece of glass is a lot of work, y'all, and you know it. So Okay, Magali has a good question. She's thinking about buying a kiln for fusing for the future. Do we recommend buying a new kiln or buying a used from a private seller? What does she need to look for and what to be careful of? All right. Well, you know what? It, Magali, if, um, if you can get a new one from the manufacturer, then... Th to me, that's what I would do. And I would, I would learn how to use that kiln and that kiln will last you forever. If you, if you buy a kiln from someone that's has it and has had it for a while, the one thing, a couple things you want to look out for, you want to, when you open the lid, you don't want to see any type of rust or corrosion on any of the elements. And you want to take the side panel off and you want to look at how the elements that come through the wall, you want to see how they're connected or if that's corroded. So, I mean, there are a few things. Kilns are very easy to work on, Magali. So definitely don't let that detour you from buying one. The newer ones are going to have controllers on them and, and computers, and they're going to be really easy to operate. Uh, and then if you buy an, a used one, you know, it may still have the controller and everything. And of course, you can download any manual for any kiln off the Internet and teach yourself how to use it. So the, the drawback of the one is, is that it's not brand new. OK. And you may have an issue or two with it. But. Believe me, and I'll and I'll tell you this, and Barbara will probably agree with me, they're really easy to repair. There's not a whole lot of parts that can go wrong with them. Changing an element in a kiln takes about 45 minutes, and you can order them right online. So. Right. So uh, what I would do, um, if I had a chance to buy a kiln and it was a good one and I could buy it for half the price of a new one, I would buy the used one. Yes, this I agree. I no, I agree with you. So what I would do is I would find out, is it a glass kiln or is it a ceramic kiln? That's the first question you need to answer. You want a glass kiln. Go ahead. No, I was just going to, Magali, the difference between the two is a glass kiln has elements in the top, a ceramic kiln, the elements are around the side only. Okay, so then uh, pop open the top and look inside. If everything looks good, there's no coils hanging out. That's your first number one thing. You don't want any coils hanging out. No. And if everything looks nice and clean, that kiln has probably not been used very much. Yeah, I mean, you don't I would imagine somebody got it. They got bored. That happens a lot. Yeah, and you don't, you know, you when you look inside, you don't want to see big chunks taken out of the brick where the coils are laying in the trough. You don't want to fix then anything. You don't want to have to fix branded. all that. And then you can go online yep. and look up the manual. Maybe before you even go, say, "Well, tell me what kind of, tell me what kind of kiln this is." Right. Go online, look at the manual, and see if that's the kind of kiln you want. 
and then yeah. and you know it, you might and, get a great deal. Uh, and Paragon Magali is just right there in Tampa, just on the other side there of the pond from you. So you're in being in Florida and buying a used kiln, you're probably going to find a Paragon or a Scut. Scut is more popular up here uh, in the in the southeast, but you're in the deep south, and Paragon is manufactured in Tampa. So if you if you find a a Paragon, you know, good for you. We have uh, two Paragon kilns. And uh, and then we have also our big annealers. But anyway, that's, uh, yeah, get a kiln. That's for glass. Top fire. Elements in the top. That way you get even heat. And there is a kiln called even heat. And if you can get, a, get that particular kiln used, that's another one to pick up. Because these people are really good at what they do. And unless your kiln, if, unless you don't take care of it, you really... Don't have any problems with it, do you, Barb? Yeah, and don't be worried if they say, oh, I bought this kiln 10 years ago. Kilns haven't changed at all in the last 10 years. Magali, our little kiln that we still and, fuse jewelry in is 30 years old. You know, they're they're computerized now. They've been computerized for 10 years. Uh, what you're going to find used, you're probably going to find a good one. And they the computers are user-friendly, right, Barb? Yeah, make sure it works, though. Plug it in and make sure it Plug works. it in. You know, some of Kiln's Magali are going to be 110, which is awesome. You can plug it in anywhere in the house. Other Kiln's are going to be 220 if they're much larger, but that's okay. Have your man just plug, get you a plug in right there in your glass studio so that you can do 220 work as well. Okay. Christine has a question. I hope that answered your question, Magali. Questions. I hope that answered your questions. Christine has been looking into getting a uh, ring saw. But she's told to buy a bandsaw instead. What would you suggest? Well, you know what, Christine? Here's the deal. I don't know because I've never owned a saw, but we are getting ready to purchase one. And we're going to purchase, I believe we're going to purchase the ring saw. Yes, we are. So we're going to purchase the ring saw. It's not going to be for a few more weeks before we do it. But we do have a project. And, and I'm, you know me. Ed, I'm a big fan of cutting glass by hand and learning the technique to get those, you know, really intricate cuts out. However, uh, the project we have coming up that we signed a contract on, a lot of that is is almost going to be a little bit too intricate even for Ed because of the way we want the window to look. So we're going to buy a ring saw. I've seen the band saw, a laser band saw, and uh, I had a friend of mine drop one off that I gave to him 20 years ago and it's now outside. So I'm going to get that and get it in. We're going to take a look at that. But what is that new? The band song. Oh yeah. yeah. So, and that's, it's a, uh, I don't even know that you can buy a band saw band saw blades for it, but Barbara and I are getting ready. We are going to purchase the Taurus ring saw. Is that well, right? Magali said the Gemini ring saw uh, three. It, she loves it. The Gemini, Gemini, yeah, Gemini, Gemini Taurus. That's uh, that's what we're leaning towards right now. Um, you know, and we're also um, things that Ray that has one. He loves it. Things that you guys help with with this channel, with super chats and things like that, are going to allow us to get a large format printer as well. So, so we're you know every little bit helps, guys. Thank you so much for watching watching and commenting and liking and, yeah, and tuning it in goes a long way to building our building our channel um magali said hers is a taurus oh okay yeah it's a taurus okay um christy has a taurus and she loves it okay okay it seemed like i missed a question did we miss anybody <laughs> did i miss a question or are we ready to do a demo or a chat or, or whatever can, you want to do. We can do a chat. We okay. can talk about something. Did I miss someone? I don't know. Okay, Emma. let's let's look through here and make sure I haven't missed any questions. Magali, have I missed any questions? She always calls me out. Ray said he has a Taurus too. Okay. Well, yeah, and I, I've seen how that works on some of the lamp photographs that you've sent to us, Ray. And there, I, I agree with you. Um, you know, sometimes <laughs> uh, 
I'm one of those people that is kind of sometimes is afraid of change. And uh, but Barb's got me moving into the 21st century here. I think that our viewers have you moving into. The well, I think they century. do, too. Because I can. I've been after him for years to get some things, new things like computer program and band saw and ring saw. And now all of a sudden he's doing it. This is, this is awesome. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Well, yeah, you guys, <laughs> you guys are grabbing Ed by the seat of the pants and kicking him into the 21st, 21st century. century. Get in there, Get in there Ed. Dig in, buddy. <laughs> dig in, dig in. Okay. We're going to head over to the, we're going to do a glass chat or are we going to do a demo? Well, what I got a doing? piece of glass I want to share with everybody because it's just so, so pretty. So you're going to do a demo, right? Well, I'm going to show demo. everybody a piece of glass and then okay. we're going to talk about something that everybody wants to know. Okay. I hope. Here we go. Maybe not. All right, Ed. So, go hey, ahead. here we are, guys. Welcome to Glass Chat on Monday night, May the 16th. I want to show you a piece of glass and, and here it comes. So this piece of glass, if you want to write this number down, is a Wismac and it is a number 25 and it's a DR. DR meaning double rolled. So I want you to see this beautiful glass. Take a look at this color, y'all. Take a look at this. I want you to see it because it is absolutely gorgeous. Now, what's that number again? 20 it's a W25 DR. DR meaning double rolled which means that it's been rolled twice when it comes out of the rollers and it leaves like a little pattern on here. But again, y'all, this is such a beautiful glass. I just wanted to share it with you. Again, this is the W25 DR, which is a Wismac. Okay. So that's my glass that I wanted to share with y'all. And you can see what I have here, right? Black. This is a Wismac Black. It's a 009 Wismac Black. And this, this right here, this is a piece of Spectrum. 200. Holy moly, Spectrum 200 right here. So I had a question from a customer that does stained glass as a hobby. And she said, I don't understand why the black glass cuts very easily. But when I score the white glass, I can't even hear my score cutter so i press harder and rule number one just because you can't hear the score everybody doesn't mean it's not working opal white glass okay let's let's just do this white glass is stiff okay black glass is soft okay Black glass is soft. Black glass, you can hear the score. And I want you to hear this because I'm going to start. I'm going to start at the top. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is no different than any other glass that you've seen Ed cut. Now, I want you to listen. Just, just hear this. Okay, nice, flow, steady, same amount of noise, start to finish, and there's that. But now, I want you to hear this. Now, y'all know I've been cutting glass long enough. When I, when I cut a piece of glass, I've got the same amount of pressure. It doesn't matter what it is. So here we go. Same amount of pressure, everybody. And I didn't hear a thing. All right. And if you remember, if you go back, 
if you go back a couple of videos when we were talking about cutting textured glasses, everybody, and I told you, you don't have to push any harder on your glass cutter just because it's textured or just because you can't hear the score. Here we go again. I want you to listen to this. And Barb's got the mic turned up, and I'm sure you can hear me, and I want you to listen to absolutely... Only thing you heard is my glass cutter pop off the table and in and into it. But I want you to see this, y'all. This is the white. Okay? And you didn't hear a sound. One more time. Here we go. Black. White. Okay? White. Black. Okay. So your black glass has manganese in it, and I'm not sure if that's what makes it soft or not. But in the, you could switch back if you want. I am. In the in the art glass industry or the blown glass industry, white is still a stiff color. And black is what we call a hot color or a soft color. It is as hot or as soft as cobalt blue. It gets hot right now. It stays hot and it's very soft and pliable for an extended period of time. However, white glass being what we call a stiff glass will cool off rapidly and you have very, you have a lot less working time because you don't have a working temperature to work by. Right, Barb? That's right. Yeah. That was a good demo. I hope so. That I hope everybody. That was a great demo. Okay. That was an awesome demo. I, that has been my favorite demo so far. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's a good that demo. Great, That's I great. That's I a good it. demo. <laughs> that Thanks, Barb. Awesome. So, um, I had, we have one more, a couple more questions, Ed. I'd love to take them. We're not going anywhere. The window behind us, is it lead or copper foil? It is lead and it's, and it's actually, uh, it's framed. It's, it's fabricated with three sixteenths round H lead. And we have used a granite texture for the, for the Pelican. And uh, the granite texture. Have some copper foil in there. Don't you? No. The eye. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, your Barb just reminded me. You know, when you get older, your brain just goes, I don't even know. Anyway, yeah. You know what? We did, we used copper foil around the eye in the head. Okay. Because, mm -hmm. uh, and I had some 532nd lead, round H lead, um, but it just, I thought the copper foil made the head look better and the eye look better. And, you know, we wanted a really pretty red eye inside this window for Jenny and Gary. And uh, they got it. And we ended, we were able to use copper foil so that we could make that eye even more pronounced within the pelican's head. So. Yeah, when you you're right. Thanks for reminding me, Barb. There, that, I mean, you can't even tell it unless you knew. You even close up, you can hardly tell that it's copper foil because it, it looks like. And you know me, I mix lead. it up all the time anyway. I mean, I'm always yeah. mixing it up. Um. Oh, I feel like I've missed a question. Here. I hope we haven't, Barb. Uh, there's a question: double glue glass? Uh, question mark. I'm not sure what that question. Double is. glue chip. Double glue chip. Glue chip. Double glue chip is glue chip on both sides of the glass. Yeah, I don't Double know whether chip. It, if the question pertains to cutting or if it's just a question of what it is. Well, double glue chip is is chipped on both sides of the glass, and yeah, uh, it's really hard to cut. Uh, that's one of those glasses you might, if you have a ring saw, that's one of those glasses you might want to try cutting on that. I've I have never uh, purchased double chip, only single chip, because I've always needed to be able to cut it.
correctly and put it into a window for somebody. So, yeah, the double chip is on both sides of the window glass. It might it might be a little bit more difficult to cut. Have we ever bought it? Have we no, ever bought it? No, we've never it? bought double, it. Double glue mm -hmm. chip. Yeah, um, I don't know. That's a good question. We've never had the use to really. No. Pour. And the Chinese made it? Yeah, the Chinese make it. I don't even the, know. Can you still buy it? The Chinese chip comes in 24 by 36 inch sheets. It's chipped on eighth inch window glass. It's annealed poorly, but it's okay, you know. You may have a use for it. Yeah. Is it hard to cut? Probably. Double chip, yeah. I would think so. You don't have a smooth side. I don't think it would be. Pay annealed. attention while you're cutting it. That's all yeah, I can say. It, yeah, because you don't have a smooth side. So yeah. it might be. It might be difficult. a little difficult, uh, but, you know, they wouldn't sell it if it couldn't be done. But I don't, I don't know why you would need double chip just to be different just to be different that's yes. right and you know what i'm different and if i find some double chip this week we'll in our experiment trip on we'll it. experiment on <laughs> well, we'll it we'll ask our glass yeah. guru okay update on the glass side someone wanted to know well here's the thing we are working on it and we have tried uh we're importing our new sun catchers that we're going to have online and we're getting ready to, we're to the point now where we're learning how to incorporate the color into them. And we're also, you, this glass, well, not the glass eye. That's that we're, I'm using the rapid resizer. So the glass yeah. eye is kind of like on the wayside I, right I now. I don't think that I'm going to need a glass eye. No, the point. rapid resizer is the reason we're buying a 44 inch printer. We are getting a 44 inch large format printer um, so that Ed only has to draw a very small version of what he wants to work on big. So yeah. I'm excited about that. Again, you guys are kicking me right into the 21st century. And, you know, I, I love one thing I love to do is draw. So and you're going to get to draw. That's I'm going to get to draw. And We're you know, when, you I, when I was in fifth grade, and uh, just in case my buddy Gary in Houston's listening, hey, Gary, this is a story, you probably remember this, but when I was in the fifth grade, Gary and I were in the same class together, and our teacher, we both had a crush on, but she used to send letters home to my parents that said, Eddie likes to doodle in class, and I did, I drew all the time, and my, but my father encouraged me to draw, he never told me, don't draw. He encouraged me to draw. However, um, you know, I wanted to let her know, and I, and I have told her in person, and I told her this about 20 years ago, that letter that she sent home, again, my father never discouraged me about drawing. He just encouraged me to draw in other places besides in class, uh, except art class. So anyway, but what I, what I explained to her is that those notes she sent home um, I now get paid to draw and thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, I uh, know that's just a crummy it. story. Just, no, it's not. It's, it's a not. Good story. Okay. It's a good story. It's and good you know, story. my, you all know what my fifth grade teacher, she lives about 300 yards from me and I get to see her, uh, probably at least one or two days a week. I'll wave at her. And, uh, so it's a joy and, uh, just wanted to thank her for sending those notes home. Uh, Brenda suggests to get a die cutter and not a large format printer. What would we need a die cutter for? What would we need a die cutter? We don't do dies. No, we don't don't need patterns. We don't need patterns. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe if we were doing copper foil. Yeah, if we were we doing that and that because. You would need pattern pieces for large copper foil windows, but we don't do our windows with pattern pieces. No, and we so don't. So that would be the difference. Yeah, that yes, would be no. the difference. We, you know. But thanks for the suggestion. Barbara's father used to have die cutters, and that's what he used to make yeah. his uh, die cuts with on his uh, clothing and things like that. So. Yeah, it's got a lot of good stories. I've got. Thanks for the. Uh, and hey, if I ever bore you with my stories, all you have to do is tell me, and I'll be quiet. No, <laughs> we don't want you to be quiet. Hey, the star of our show. Oh, we got some stories to tell everybody. Okay, 
Well, um, do we have any more questions? Anyone have any input? You have any questions, complaints, um, Mark suggestions? Mason. Okay, Mark, I had several sheets of double chip. It's only chipped on one side, but the chipping is more condensed, a lot less smooth. Oh, the double chip. Okay, so they double chipped it on the same side. Okay. What that does, the double chip on one side gives you, I thought everybody, I thought y'all were talking about the double, double chip, chip that's on, on both, both sides. sides. No, when they double chip on, on the one side, what that does is it creates more obscureness into the glue chip. And it makes, and the, of course, the Chinese chip, if you think about it and look at it, the Chinese chip is very dense, very, very small chips. The American chip looks like ferns or frost on your windshield, but the Chinese chip is much smaller. So the double chip is used for creating more obscureness within your window. Um, I, and again, Mark, I thought you were talking about a double chip where the chip is actually on both sides. I know that that is available and I knew that the double chip on one side is available too. So, but the double chip on one side, it, it makes your, uh, it gives you more privacy because you don't you slim to none chance of having any open areas whatsoever within that chip. So. Um, Magali said that Annabelle asked if, um, um, they could make a heart for her teacher and Magali said she would have to help. And so Magali had her do some soldering and she tinned it and she tacked it and she did a soldering line, a line and she did great. And she has a pic and a video. Um, congratulations, Annabelle. Congratulations, Annabelle. And Magali, if you send that to us, um, we'll post, since we'll Annabelle is our youngest viewer that we know of to date, maybe we could feature a little... If with your permission, Magali, uh, that, something on the that live we could stream we could fin yeah we could something on the live stream you know but we have to have your permission, Magali. We'd be happy, happy to show the talent of our youngest viewer. <laughs> um. Okay, so we have a lot of people saying thanks. Okay, Magali, yeah, let's see if we could do something. I mean, we could either do a little video short or something, or you could do a short. I don't know. Uh, you, can, uh, you could do we'll a short it. and send it to us. Yeah. Or, you um, know how to get a hold of us. But Nicole. anyway, we'll do something. We'll do something. So a big thank you to everyone. Um, if you have any questions or uh, think of anything, send us an email. Visit our website. There's a questionnaire on the RDRV page. You can just fill it out. Um watch binge watch some of our videos that helps our ratings yeah <laughs> and you know what those of you that are hanging out in the in the background there um we would love to answer your questions however we would also like you to subscribe to our channel as you subscribe to our channel when you come in you'll want to click on the the notification bell there at the top and you'll want to so that you're notified when we come out with a new video or even we have our live stream. And I promise, live streams are Monday night at 7 p.m. And uh, so, you know, we may miss one while we're uh, in Corning, but we may do we may do something live from the Corning Museum of Glass. I don't know what we're going to do. And, and don't worry, if you come in late on the live stream, you can always go to the replay and yeah. miss any of the action. Pop in anytime, y'all. Don't don't we be do afraid to jump in. Some new videos coming up, but um, we just uh, took in a bunch of inventory, and Barbara has been doing well, we're working on that. for the past two weeks, and I have not been able to. So I may have a, a little video on what's happening in the studio. I know we have to finish up the video. Yeah, on the and we have a new product line coming up. And then we have several scripts that are written out. So I apologize, but I hope you all are getting the information you need to move forward and be successful by. Right. Well, our goal, our, live stream. our goal is to make you successful in your endeavors within the art glass community. Joyce, I'm sorry about your knitting, but. Um, rip it out and start over. 
Joyce said she was sitting here listening and crocheting on sh her sweater and made uh, 12 rows too long. Oh, my. Sleep 12 rows too long. I know. That can be a problem. <laughs> You're knitting a sweater? God bless you. Yeah. That's crochet. awesome. She's crocheting. Oh, crochet. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Barbara and I crochet. I don't crochet on the Not scale that much. Barbara does. <laughs> Not as much. Yeah. Okay. But I like it. Yeah. I just... So I hope that black and white glass answered your question. And the other thing is, is all opaque glasses, the majority of them, you probably won't hear your glass cutter going across. But please remember, just because you can't hear it doesn't mean it's not working. Don't, you know, don't stand on it and put more pressure because you know what's going to happen? Your glass isn't going to break correctly. Okay? Yeah. Again, don't change up your pressure for the glass you're using, the same amount of pressure, your cutter works fine. Don't make it a cutty problem. Yeah, it's not the cutter, it's, it's the, the cutty. It's the cutty. <laughs> Don't make it a cutty problem. Okay, I think we're going to go find something to eat either in our refrigerator. Frigidator. <laughs> or uh, we might go get something. I, I think we might go get something. Let's see. But thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for watching our videos. And thank you for coming to the live Yeah, and don't stream. forget, guys, we have we have our new RDRV hats that are available now. Uh, we also we have them in black and this beautiful turquoise color that I'm wearing. We also have our new uh, our, uh, our navy blue RDRV aprons. And just keep in mind, every time that something is purchased from our channel, it helps us grow the channel, which helps us take care of you, our viewers, much better. Okay, Ed. So Thank don't forget you. to subscribe <laughs> and ring that bell, y'all, because and, here we go. Okay, we're going. We're, we're going. Leaving. We're leaving. Jenny, we'll see here. you and Gary later on this week. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all. Thank you. Thank